On the 11th of November, each year, we pause to pay honor to those who have worn the uniform of our nation. On this particular day, we are all united to honor these individuals. They are our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, and our fellow citizens. And by pausing on this day, we show them our respect. Quite often I'm asked, as a veteran, what does Veterans Day mean to you? And when I think about that question, I think about how young men and young women since the founding of this country have always come forward when their country has asked them to do it. They've done it even when the citizens of the country have not supported them, like in Vietnam. They've done it even when the citizens have forgot about them, like after Korea. But regardless, they have always given their best. I have been able to observe this timeless connection from my generation, the Vietnam generation, until today's. And it's a unifying spirit and a dedication to one another that is a continuum that we should be quite proud of. With over 40 years of active service, I have seen several generations of men and women come to age in the service. They join for a wide variety of reasons. But on the battlefield, those reasons melt away. And in my opinion, and from what I have observed, two things drive them to perform so well. Number one, they believe in something larger than themselves. And number two, they don't want to let their buddies down. The individual on the left, the individual on the right. They are there for them. They are willing to do and sacrifice anything, including giving their lives for one another. And this comradeship, this brotherhood is very special. And most of us will never forget that. Today's commemoration includes remarks by our guest speaker, our normal medley of service songs, which you are encouraged to sing and a salute uh, to all of our veterans by the, our Living History Detachment. My dad was in the Marine Corps. And growing up, I always knew that I wanted to do something. Um, and I knew that I'd never live it down if I joined any other service, just hearing from him all the time. Um, and I never wanted to wonder if I could have done it. I didn't want to go into one branch and then wonder if I could have been a Marine. Um, and I knew I wanted to fly, so it, all that added up. Uh, the Marine Corps was where it was at. Being a helicopter crew chief was probably the coolest um, possible job I could have gotten, uh, looking back on it now. And uh, it was a lot of work. You had to be a mechanic first, and so you had to learn the aircraft and learn how to fix it if things went down uh, and you weren't at home uh, with somebody to help you. So as a crew chief, you had to be able to, to fix things as they came up and then help the pilots navigate and and uh, do missions and things like that. And uh, it, was, it was pretty spectacular because we got to see things from a completely different perspective. You know, a lot of times when you're on the ground, that's all you can see. Um, but once you get up in the air, you, you see a completely different dynamic. And it kind of helps you look at things from a different perspective, even going forward in civilian life. Um, but flying was definitely the best part of the Marine Corps. It was a blast. <laughs> I miss it a lot. <laughs> I think um, when I think about Veterans Day, I think back to the, the men and women that I served with. And uh, it's just a pretty remarkable group of people.
aside from my kids, it's probably the best thing I've ever done. And I just appreciate everybody that I met the whole time I was in. Um, you know, I think every branch is, is special in its own way. Uh, but uh, the brothers and sisters that I gained from being in the Marine Corps, uh, that's something that wouldn't have, never would have been possible any other way. And uh, just thank each and every one of them, whether they're with us or not, for doing what they did and for, uh, for being willing to stand up for their country. It's the best country in the world, you know? I'm Sergeant Jeff Cobbsett, a former United States soldier who served with Fox Troop, 9th Cavalry Regiment, 3rd Brigade Reconnaissance Troop, 1st Cavalry Division. While deployed to Baghdad, Iraq, I was a machine gunner on a Humvee and part of a seven-man team known as a private security detachment. And when I got home, I was called a hero. But what is a hero? You all have heroes. And they can be anything to anyone. Maybe your hero is your mom, or your dad, or another family member. Maybe your hero is a sports athlete, or celebrity. Or maybe your hero is your teacher in your classroom. Everybody has a hero. And while it's important to honor our current and former service members this Veterans Day, it's also important to remember them every day. And now, more than ever, we should recognize our nation's first responders. As for my heroes, my heroes are all of those who did not get to come home. And that's exactly why we do what we do here at the National Museum of the Pacific War. We inspire our youth by honoring our heroes. It's now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, actually someone who needs no introduction to Texans. He served as state senator from the 7th District from 2007 to 2015, and he's been the Lieutenant Governor of Texas from 2015 until today. It is my distinct honor to introduce the Honorable Dan Patrick. As we honor our veterans once again, I think back to soldiers of the past who helped us discover what liberty really means and what freedom is all about and the sacrifices that it takes for a nation to live with freedom and a land of liberty. If you go through the various conflicts and battles on foreign soil or on our own soil, we see that the one driving force is that men want to be free and women want to be free. I think about my dad in World War II. He was a young 18 year old when he dropped out of high school and joined the Marines like so many. He was able to come home, thank God. So many didn't, so many came back wounded. But when they came back, they built this great country that we have all inherited. And since that greatest generation, there have been so many more generations whether it was Korea, whether it was Vietnam, whether it was the Gulf War, whether it's in Afghanistan or Iraq, we now have another great generation. So as we look back in history or we look back at our own family's lives, I have a nephew now in the Marines. We are so proud of our veterans. They contribute so much to the time in their life when they're willing to sacrifice everything. And then, when they come home, they contribute even more throughout our history. So on Veterans Day, we honor our veterans. We honor our soldiers. We thank you for giving us the gift of freedom and liberty and being willing to sacrifice so that we can raise our families with the hope that their generation will continue to live with that same liberty and that same freedom. So on this Veterans Day, thank you again we honor you. God bless. Lieutenant Governor Patrick, thank you very much for joining us here in Fredericksburg today. As I was thinking again about our armed forces, there is a difference from 
the armed forces that I joined and the armed forces today. And that is that we are a married force today. Most of the service personnel are in fact married. So when you thank a serviceman or a servicewoman, also thank their family, because in many ways they are serving too, and they also have a very difficult job. Thank you for listening to us today and stay safe.